Oh, oh, do you mind just just talk? I can I can introduce myself. Fair enough. <laughs> Hi everyone, um, I'm Daniel Black, I'm from the MariaDB Foundation. Um, I want to confess up front, um, as I did before, that I am a bit of a newbie in Laravel, as I am actually a lot of application layers. However, I do actually help out um, on Stack Overflow and a, a number of other forums and, and see the same sort of faults, even though I don't you know, intricately know the language, um, I know some of the patterns uh, that people get stuck in Data, uh, when they're trying to actually program with databases. So I'm aiming this talk at a very basic level, um, uh, at a beginning level, uh, to go th uh, through this. And a lot of what I'm going to say applies um, to um, Postgres, MySQL and other databases that you may use, um, relational databases, as it goes through. So what I'm going to be covering um, is data types. Uh, by structures, I kind of mean tables um, and, and the way they're used. Going to talk uh, very briefly about queries and, you know, funneling things like transactions, but I'll, I'll try not to put too many spoilers in the intro. Uh, and indexing. Um, and these are the kind of ways, th steps you think about when you're actually designing an application. So in uh, Laravel, um, as far as I can tell, there was uh, three main uh, types of ORMs. I'm going to try to give examples in those. Um, hopefully there's enough info to um, uh, go through. Uh, just hands up, um, who's used Red Bean PHP? No one? Okay. Um, what about the other one? Uh, Doctrine? Uh, Eloquent? Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, it's documented on, on there that. Um, but what I actually noticed on the official GitHub page is the maintainer of Eloquent actually um, gave up maintaining it um, this month. Uh, so uh, sorry, <laughs> um, but you know, um, I think as a community, you might need to work out you know what you're doing as far as um, whether you want to try to take over maintenance or um, migrate to something else. Um, so uh, that was the reason I actually didn't actually put any um, eloquent kind of uh, examples in here, but hopefully you'll s see them uh, uh, mapping in, in, in the other uh, frameworks here that I've, I've listed. Uh, for those that uh, don't know, these are a bridged list of some of the MariaDB types. Uh, so it's like you've got integer types and bit is a kind of extension of that. You've got uh, floating point numbers and doubles. You've got um, decimals, which are the, uh, the fixed point. Um, you've got var chars and, and chars as like uh, characters. Uh, text and blobs as your very large ones, whether they've got a character set or not. Um, enums, dates, timestamps, years, JSONs. And there's a couple more, but I'll, I'll um, give those later. An example in Doctrine as to how um, you'd actually uh, specify something as a type is uh, one of the ways is defined by the annotations here. And the annot uh, annotations sort of make this like an integer. And you just declare the class and, and this is the way the ORM uh, gets it. The reason uh, data types are important is especially as you start um, joining things together um, if the data types of your classes are actually different, uh, what happens is uh, the MariaDB underneath needs to um, fetch the row, um, and if you've got, like, say, a number in a, in a varchar field, it'll need to fetch it, convert it, and then do the comparison. Uh, so this takes a away a lot of the performance advantages of the databases. Um, who can tell me what SQL stands for? Anyone? <laughs> okay. So what does structured mean? <laughs> yeah. So um, the, the idea behind the, the concept of uh, SQL is the structured query language that was designed about everything having like a fixed type um, and being in every row slash column. Um, every column was like a, a fixed type and, and having like a single value. 
and you can see that in the way the language is developed to, when you do queries um, you know there's no real you know find a value in this column in this uh, s cell and, and work out what it is it's it's all around the structure so having um, a, a good type uh, definition up front yeah is a good on that an example of um, red bean PHP, which has been around for a while. I'll stop moving, Mr. Photographer. Uh, <laughs> is uh, th what they've done in their RRM is you uh, define a book, and a book is ends up being a table. Um, then they kind of dynamically uh, allow you to set um, members variables of that, and it kind of works out the type actually based on the string. So. St it's obviously it's a string. There's no decimals there, so it's obviously an integer. Um, it's obviously a date. Uh, because it's quoted, this becomes a decimal. Um, and uh, without the quotes, this becomes a double. And, and that's the way the ORMs translate them through. So as you're doing code, it's important to actually guess it, maintain a, a consistency uh, in, in the way you do it. And the data types uh, do become important. Uh, here's an example from the code base. Um, they said like MySQL and MariaDB didn't actually support an, a native GIS type, so they did these kind of wrappers um, to actually be able to convert uh, something in a text to a, a GIS type. So the, the Red Bean PHP has got a number of extensions for this kind of conversion. For for those that sort of uh, well, actually, no one admitted coming to my talk yesterday. Um, but MariaDB has had uh, a number of uh, new data types introduced, and some of these have been like INET version four, INET version five, um, for if you're you know storing IP addresses. Uh, so they are available as a native type. Uh, how you get those into ORMs? ORMs um, because I guess. Uh, new data types in um, SQL isn't sort of something that comes up frequently, so it's uh, a little bit of a work in progress. Uh, but what I've done here is I've pulled out an example from the the doctrine examples, uh, and this is how to actually make an iNote version type and iNote version six uh, type. So a little bit of uh, boilerplate, and all of a sudden you've got this new. Uh, data type available in your structures. Um, and the same thing, uh, advantage of data types is that um, the type safety is forced. So if you try to insert a um, non IP version 6 address into the type, um, you'll get an error. And, and that's the kind of consistency that the database can enforce on you rather than trying to write code that sort of says, well, is this an IP version 6 address inserted? Uh, what you can do is you can just insert it and see if there's any errors and w or warnings. Um, and that way you don't have to write your own type checking code. So data structures, um, what uh, frequently come up uh, across with people having trouble is when they start to use like arrays and JSON types. Now there is a good case for arrays and JSON types if you just fetch them and throw them straight at, at the presentation layer or, or the user that way. Where it gets a little bit tricky is if you're trying to um, write an SQL query that says uh, find this kind of object um, uh, key value pair in a JSON object in a table. Um, and that's the sort of thing that databases don't do particularly well at all. Uh, there's ways around it, but um, trying to actually get a, an ORM layer to uh, actually implement that um, is a, a little uh, complex. Sometimes you're better, better off um, doing an extra column out there uh, to say, you know, uh, if the colour of a book is important, put that as its own column type, and that way you've got something to search for directly. Uh, strangely enough, the simpler the SQL is written, uh, the better the database can um, uh, handle it. <laughs> um, though the written handles are um, pretty... Here, here's 
the, the other thing I want to actually talk about is relations. So uh, when you're doing databases that you get some tables related to other tables. Uh, and, and this is uh, the way you'd actually do kind of, if you needed um, a one-to-many relationship, what you'd have is a separate table for that relationship. And as part of that separate table, you'd have uh, the original um, uh, identify on the primary key and a multiple values each in their own row. This makes it uh, easy to join up um, at the end um, as I'll show later uh, but what happens here uh, is this is the way that uh, PHP Bean if I did my markup correctly uh, does um, multiple objects. So here we've got a shop and here we've got products and here we've got a kind of product listed. It, it presents it as an array kind of in PHP, um, but it's, it's really a separate table. And so uh, this shop has got, say, a vase. Syntax on Doctrine um, is a, uh, also controlled by attributes. So here it's saying, you know, there's a collection uh, and it goes um, maps to a different table. And so we get the ability to define w one table name and its, its relation to the other one. Uh, many to many relations exist. Um, as you know, sort of, you know, the relationship to between, you know, friends isn't exclusive or people in the open source community. So there's many to many relations uh, that way. And you can use many to many relationships um, and what they use is a separate joining table between the two. That's how it's sort of hidden underneath um, and what ORM layers will typically do is they'll index the relation and make that be able to be queried. So on to queries. Um, I guess uh, for those that sort of don't use um, ORMs, or even if you do, uh, the important thing to do with queries um, as far as your uh, security is to uh, bind um, values uh, to the statement and execute things just like a prepared statement. When you start sort of concatenating strings throughout the things, you start to become vulnerable to SQL injection especially as um, some of the inputs may be, you know, from, from web forms and uh, other unsafe sources in PHP. So what um, this kind of binding um, is, there ends up being these, these markers in the SQL as to where the value ends up and, and the binding ends up in, in a array that um, passes the variables through. And that's the same with print statements. Uh, if you're using MySQL Real Escape, um, yeah, using um, binding parameters is actually a bit more secure. Um, the Real Escape is there, but it does a um, lot of horribly um, things underneath, and it's just easy to use the prepared statements, and uh, that gets the safety into the protocol uh, uh, quite quickly. And it's easier to read, <laughs> to be fairly honest. Uh, while I'm talking about queries, I'll talk about, I guess, a couple of anti-patterns. Um, it's easy, I guess, when you're writing PHP or any sequential language code um, to kind of forget about the concurrency aspects of things. Uh, race conditions can occur, um, and, and when they do, you know, either vulnerabilities happen or bad user experience happens. So in this first bit of code, um, I'm looking up a user. I'm seeing if the user is there, and otherwise I'm just creating a new user. So what obviously is a race condition here is if one bit of code does a lookup, it says nothing's there, and then another look, another thread goes through and, and starts the same thing. It's look up, oh, nothing's there, and then it's just a race condition to see who inserts quickly. So as an alternate pattern, um, try the, the second approach. What you do is just try to store the user. Uh, there will be some unique constraints in that database um, about you know its identifier 
or some other aspect. If you get that error, uh, which incidentally is defined in the SQL standard, so <laughs> it may look like I'm hard coding a value here, but it's a hard coding value that um, you know all SQL implementations will use from Postgres to um, SQL Server to MySQL to MariaDB to SQL Lite. Uh, and this is the code for a unique key co um, constraint violation. So this says, you know, try to store a user. Uh, if there's, um, if we failed that, let's just create a new user, Daniel, and 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 that way, um, you've got a, a race condition that's sort of proof um, against um, changes. Uh, the other aspect that's actually quite useful that you've probably seen in other languages is transactions. They're um, not a really big, big scary database feature. They're a, a fundamental aspect that you should be taking advantage of as a programmer. So if you're doing a, an online uh, order, um, you need to subtract stuff from products. You need to create a, a new order form um, in uh, a new purchase, an invoice, whatever, you do it all within the same transaction. That way if for some reason something fails like, you know, there isn't enough stock of a particular thing, um, that means, you know, the entire thing is rolled back. If the user just happens to press cancel on the web page halfway through the order, you don't end up with um, stock out of your inventory that really hasn't been assigned to an invoice. So transactions are a great way of ensuring the consistency of your data as it goes through. And as you can see, um, Doctrine provides an easy way to this. Um, PHP Bean, um, similar kind of thing, uh, an anonymous function goes through. Um, there. Um, there's also, I, th I believe in the extension list, there's a, you can put in another function here that sort of gets called if like an error occurs. So in, in that kind of thing, you might want to catch and look at the error and sort of see, oh, that invoice is a duplicate. Uh, we ran out of stock on this thing. Um, you can actually start to do some very careful handling of things that's actually um, consistent. And it's also consistent if, you know, 10 people try to, you know, order all your stock at the same time, you can make sure that, you know, only one gets it at the end. Uh, there's locking modes uh, when you say fetch a, a row. If you fetch a row and you know you're going to update it as like the next instruction, um, select it for update and that way you'll be granted exclusive access to it. If a bunch of other things are just reading it, well, they'll continue reading it. Um, but, you know, when the update returns, you know you've got exclusive access to change the row uh, until you hit commit, uh, until the transaction commits. Uh, indices. Um, there is certainly not enough time in this talk to cover indices uh, properly. Uh, but I guess what I will say is that by default, the um, an ORM will actually put, I guess, primary keys as the obvious thing. Um, if you've got a, a foreign key constraint, um, it'll add an index for those, and those are really di dictated by the database. Uh, also, if you do one-to-many relationships, there'll be index on those, but they'll all actually be kind of single column indexes. What frequently you're doing in applications is searching um, both by two elements. Now, both MariaDB, MySQL, and Postgres, I believe, I'm less sure of that, will only use a single index at a time. So it may be the case that one index is good um, or another index is good, but it'll still only use one. Uh, what is good? to do in that situation is to realize that you're actually searching on these things and prepare a compound index of multiple um, columns uh, ahead of time to count for your query. Uh, <laughs> so uh, quickly how indexes work. Um, uh, who here actually remembers a phone book? 
<laughs> so it's just like that. Um, imagine what you're putting in the index is the columns of that thing in order. Now, the order is especially important um, in the evaluation of some kind of queries. Um, so imagine there's a, a, a you know paper written out you know big volume of things with your columns in that order. Now when you're given a query like you know what's the title like um, Mexicans percent that's kind of a range. So if and what we're also doing is flavor equals red Mexican beans of course. Um, so if we had a, uh, a phone book um, indexed by the title first, we could go, yeah, yes, okay, we can find up, you know, where, where Mexican is first. But then we go, where is red? We'd have to search through all the Mexican entries to work out um, where the red is. If we did it the other way around, what we'd end up is, oh, okay, we can find a reference to red quickly. And then we know uh, Mexican star, the second element, is actually in order as well. Um, so we can quickly go through there and we can work out when that second range is finished. So the basics of it is when you're doing compound index indexes, the order matters. Look for fixed parts of the query, the ones that go, you know, flavor equals X, put them first in the index. Then look at things like range uh, and yes, like some pattern percent is a range and, and that can be appended afterwards. And this will um, kind of make this kind of query be able to use that compound uh, index quite efficiently throughout uh, when it happens. If you happen to be joining to another table afterwards, say Mexican beans, uh, oh, I don't know what you join beans to, um, <laughs> to something else, um, on say a field of, what's an attribute of beans? Um, um, tastiness. Uh, so if you've got a, a tastiness flavour, you want to join to another table, um, that is the kind of thing you put as like the third element in a compound index. Nice. Uh, if you ever get stuck on this um, uh, as to you know what indexes you should be using, um, use Stack Overflow, you know, put an example of uh, or what kind of structure you have, uh, what kind of query you have, even if it's in uh, an ORM4 or, or that kind of thing. Um, if you've got a way to actually push it out directly as an SQL, um, uh, some people might be able to read it better and you'll get a better response. Uh, but at least people can actually tell you, you know, what indexes should be used. And this will solve, you know, a lot of performance problems that you may have in code bases. Um, honestly, if there's something good I can do for the environment, you know, while working as a, a database engineer is get people to index their code properly and would probably save millions of tons of CO2 in the world. Um, so how you add indexes, uh, here's an example in Doctrine, um, it's another comment um, and it specifies two columns and I've just used what I did before. Um, two values in order. Uh, for red bean PHP, um, it's a lot more manual, uh, and this is because it was very dynamic in the way that red bean made it. You can kind of add columns all you want. So they uh, sort of say, after you've you know done everything you want in the defining how the structures actually are, um, you basically do a, a manual SQL statement and that's how you um, add it. Uh, notice the if not exists, um, that's been there for a while so um, no matter what version you're doing you can end up with an element there. And why is that stuck? Mm. I have no idea. Anyway, um, so I guess the last thing I wanted to sort of cover, um, queries. 
Uh, for those that are, are doing uh, joins inside your application, um, databases are really good at doing joins. Um, don't try to implement yourself. So what you'll find uh, in whatever language you're using, there's a join syntax. Um, you say you join between these two tables. We want a result set out um, and you use it that way. Uh, the more you understand um, how an SQL uh, can actually help your application, um, the less code you have to write and, and the better the performance will actually be. Uh, so was there another aspect needed to cover? Uh, no, that was about it. So yep, queries and then indices. So that's all I actually wanted to cover as a basics on um, indexing and databases for the moment. Um, does anyone have any questions? Nope. Okay. Sure. What's up? And uh, I use Laravel uh, previous time, and. Uh, sometimes the the OIM cannot uh, uh, it's not enough to uh, lay, let let me use the, the, the my to my feature so I need to use the role SQL or or sometimes use OIM will be maybe lower performance so do, do you prefer to use OIM or just use the role SQL <laughs> Yeah, it sort of really comes down to, you know, what's most maintainable for you. Um, you know, uh, there's an aspect that, yeah, you can, uh, I guess, do the raw SQL and, you know, put a comment as to, in your code as to why you do it. And that way, at least the next person that comes across it can say, oh, okay, you, you, you didn't have a moment of insanity wanting to do raw SQL there. Um, the other aspect is uh, that because Laravel is, I guess, open source, um, if you see something that you kind of want to do um, in an ORM, you can request a feature to do it or um, write the uh, uh, patch into Laravel itself if you want to actually improve uh, that to do it. Um, uh, as I did in yesterday's talk, that there's a number of features of MariaDB that are constantly evolving. There's new set taxes being implemented. Uh, there's features like system version tables that have a new syntax. Uh, and to get those available to people uh, writing Laravel or any other uh, application language, uh, work needs to be done to patch it through. So I guess as open source uh, enthusiasts in an open source contributions, uh, my uh, aspect is, you know, if you want something um, and you've got the skills in PHP or whatever other language, um, request to be implemented. Uh, hi, you mentioned uh, JSON in data types of uh, MariaDB, and I'm wondering what is a good practice to uh, store uh, store data in JSON instead of add some columns for uh, each property. <laughs> Thank you. So when would you saying when when would you store something in JSON rather than a column store? Um, look at I guess your usage patterns. If you're uh, entirely doing like data analytics on the data, um, maybe it's better in a in a column or store. Um, if your main workload is like transactional and say the JSON object is a, a description of a product or something that you need to throw back to uh, Angular or whatever it's in the, the front end, um, you know, then that's probably a good approach to put in a, a transactional database. Anything else? Um, I'll be here to close um, or um, my email is daniel at mariadb.org as I put in the fr uh, top um, the very top uh, if it showed up no I did that in the other talk but anyway if you have troubles um, the stack overflow email directly and um, we'll get going uh, thank you all for coming
son of my friend. We discussed with this and 